the Armenian king has assembled a massive army to defend his city against the might of Imperial Rome. Though outnumbered, the Romans are seasoned professionals when it comes to fighting Eastern armies. Today, the fate of these two armies lies with a group of musicians from Durham. Let's have the in infantry protect the archers. It's not going well. Loads of our men are running away. Here, they will refight this landmark battle using state-of-the-art technology against the greatest generals of the ancient world. This is Time Commands. With Eddie Mayer inside a 21st century military command center and taking control of the battlefield are a group of musicians from Durham. Billy Nicholson, 36, music lecturer, rank general. Emma Fisk, 30, music lecturer, rank lieutenant. Mark Broadbent, 17, music student, rank lieutenant. Leanne Turton, 18, music student, rank general. So you are all Musical. We've got musical ability and talent. Is that right? We're all musical. I don't know whether we all have talent. <laughs> well, obviously, what we really want to do is find out whether you can fight battles and understand strategy and work together as a team and, and learn from all the information you get. But there's, there's time to come on to all of that. I want to know a little more about you first. I know that uh, Emma and Billy, you, you work together. You're also a couple. And, and Emma, right. you're a... And don't take offence at this, I think you might be pleased. You're a rock chick, aren't you? Um, I have been in my time. Ex-rock chick? <laughs> Ex-rock chick, yes. At the age of 16, you did what? I was persuaded to join a rock band by some <laughs> dodgy characters with a white transit van and spent about seven years touring in Britain and Europe and recording. Um, we recorded three, three albums. What kind of music are we talking about? Melancholy rock. Well, you would be after seven years in a transit van. Yes. <laughs> Do you think you're a good strategist? Well, we'll find out by the end of today, won't we? Well, we will. We will. And hopefully you won't be lying in a pool of blood by the end of it. Well, maybe after the show. <laughs> if we lose our will. We've got two of your students here, but Mark and, and Leanne, you know what, what, what these two are like as lecturers. Have they, have they been good? Have you learned a lot from them? Um. Yes. Yes. And although you've obviously got musical talent, I know, Leanne, you, you want to be an actress. I do, yes. Recently, you played a part of a bisexual arch villainess <laughs> in a comedy musical who set out to reshape the world in her image with mind-altering drugs concealed in exotic love beauty products. I did. <laughs> I missed that. How did that go? <laughs> oh, it was just... It, I enjoyed playing the role. It was... Different. Yeah. Different, yes, very different. I've never done anything like that before. I'm it's glad good. to hear it. <laughs> It was good. Now I want to introduce you to two of my closest and dearest friends, our historical experts, Eric and Sol. Say hello to them. Hello. Uh, <laughs> up there in the gods, and they're going to be watching everything you do. Dr. Eric Nussbacher, senior lecturer in war studies, Royal Military Academy, Sandhurst. Dr. Saul David, military historian and author. Who is going to be taking charge of this battle? Who are the generals and who are the lieutenants? I'm a general. And I'm a general. And that was decided how? We had a short discussion about it and came to a, a decision very, very quickly. <laughs> I was there for most of that discussion. It lasted about an hour. And at one stage, everyone was a general and everyone was a lieutenant. Are you sure you've made the right choice? Can we change our decision? No, you can't. Okay, okay. I don't want any recriminations when it all goes wrong. What do you think the most uh, important weapon at your disposal might be in the battle that lies ahead? Do we have nuclear weapons or anything like that? Or? No, series four. These clipboards in front of you, distribute those between you. <laughs> this is the information gathering part. And here you'll find out lots of important things which will be very useful when it comes to the heat of the battle. So the more notes you take, the more sense you make of it, the better the chance you have of winning. You're going to be in charge of King Tigran in the battle of Tigranesata. Have a look at this.
The year is 69 BC. The place is Tigranocerta, the golden city of the ancient empire of Armenia. On one side, the forces of the Roman Republic under the Roman general Lucullus. On the other side, Tigran, king of Armenia, one of the most powerful rulers of the Near East. For five years, Rome had been at war with the kingdom of Pontus in today's central Turkey. After a series of crushing defeats at the hands of the Roman legions, the Pontic king Mithridates fled to his ally and son-in-law, Tigran. Tigran had transformed Armenia into one of the most powerful empires in the east. As a testament to his own success, Tigran built a royal city, Tigranocerta, on the borders of Armenia and Mesopotamia, near modern Sirte in Turkey. It was here that the king of Pontus, Mithridates, took refuge from the Romans. But in 69 BC, the Roman general Lucullus ordered Tigran to surrender Mithridates to him. When Tigran refused, Lucullus crossed the Euphrates and invaded Armenia in an effort to force Tigran to hand over his father-in-law Mithridates to the Romans. Instead, Tigran assembled a massive army to fight the Romans. The Armenian army was huge, but the quality poor. Many of the soldiers were forced into service and lacked the determination and discipline of the Roman legionaries. Compared to the Romans, many of Tigran's men were also very poorly equipped. But Tigran did have one crack unit, the cataphracts. These heavily armored horses and men were his army's greatest strength. And he also had 10,000 archers, which gave him an advantage over the Romans. Tigran was confident of victory and keen to defend his capital city. To fight the Armenians, Lucullus had mustered 12,000 soldiers. Rome's army was the most feared fighting force in the world. Its legions were divided into cohorts of professional and practiced soldiers. They had already routed the army of Pontus and were confident of smashing the very similar forces of Tigran. The battleground at Tigranocerta is an open plain outside the city walls. A fordable river separates the two armies. It is the eve of battle. If Lucullus wins, he will break the Armenian Empire and extend Rome's influence eastward. He will also gain immense personal prestige and wealth. King Tigran of Armenia is 70 years old and politically shrewd, but lacks skill as a military leader. If he wins, he'll cement his reputation as the King of Kings and protect his empire from expansionist Rome. The stakes are high. Battle is imminent. All right, that's your first look at what's at stake. What are your thoughts? We're going to get our heads kicked in. Yeah. <laughs> Enough of this blind optimism. I don't understand why they're so pessimistic. They're out there in the field with a huge army with the very intimidating cataphracts. They've got lots of archers. They should be going at this with some gusto. What have you learned there? We have one main unit and archers. We've got a river between us. The Romans are professional soldiers and <laughs> we aren't. I think the problem here is that they're basically intimidated by the reputation of the Roman army and in some senses they've got good reason to be. The team must pay close attention because the battle they are going to fight will be won or lost on the information they are about to receive. Would you like to know more about where the battle is going to take place? Yes, please. Let's have a look. The terrain. The desert battlefield is a plain with a deep river running through it. On one side stands the Armenian army ready to protect their city, Tigranocerta. Across the river, hidden in a dry, shallow valley, the invading Romans. 